Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce. It's the backup channel, backing Celeb up and bringing you all the breaking news. Hey yo, what's up everybody? I'm feeling good today and I hope you're feeling good today too. So let's get right into it. Rapper 2 Chainz' son Halo says that if you want to book him to do a show or you want him to rap on a track, you're going to have to pay him the big bucks. Check out what Halo had to say when it comes to his booking fees. How much you charging, Halo? If somebody want to book you? No, if somebody want to book me, I'm talking, I'm charging at least like 50000 50 grand. 50 K. 50 K. 50 K. 50 K to book Halo, man. That yeah. is, man. If you want to book Halo, he want a 50. If not, if not, if not, at least 500. <laughs> if you got a lot of money, 1000 or 500. I, I could <laughs> If not, if you're really, really rich, I'm talking 50 K. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love this kid, and I'm going to tell you why. My man was like, if you're rich, you're going to pay me the 50 k But I understand that everybody doesn't have it like that. So I'm going to work with you on a slide and scale. And if you don't have 50 k I'll do it for like $500 or $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But what I love the most is that this kid knows his worth. And I think that a whole lot of people who are listening to this show right now can benefit from this clip because you have skills, gifts, and talents that are worth so much and you bring so much to the table. However, you're being undervalued. Why? Because you don't know how to ask for what you're worth. I mean, I don't care whether you're asking for your salary or if like you're a freelance artist who's like getting paid to do work and the people say, how much do you charge? A lot of times we lowball that number or like we cut it down a little bit because we don't want the person who's paying to walk away. But I'm telling you right now, ask for the number that you're worth because your work time, energy, and creativity is worth just as much as anybody else's work time, energy, and creativity. I'm telling you, there are people out there who are doing the same exact thing that you're doing, but they're getting paid more money. And the only difference is that they were bold enough to say, uh-uh, this labor ain't cheap. Always remember, if you don't know your own value, somebody's gonna tell you your value, and it's gonna be less than your worth. Now, with that being said, don't turn around and try to sell me no trash like this dude who found Chief Keef's double styrofoam cups in a dumpster and then turned around and tried to sell them for $14,000 on eBay. Okay, so this is what happened. The other day, Chief Keef was driving around in his Scooby-Doo colored Lamborghini and he pulls over and he throws some stuff in the trash. The next thing you know, this dude jumps up out of nowhere, jumps into the dumpster and grabs Chief Keef's used double styrofoam cups and now he's trying to sell them for like $14,000 dollars on eBay. Okay, let me see how I can say this. One, that's nasty. Two, that's nasty. Do you know the type of stuff that people put in the dumpsters? And then on top of that, who wants somebody's like used styrofoam cup? That's crazy. Listen, let me know what you think about this dumpster diver trying to sell Chief Keef's used styrofoam cups with the backwash and saliva on eBay. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now check it out. Young Jock wants all of you people out there to know that he is very, very, very emotional about the state of the world today. So he posted a video of himself crying on Instagram with a caption that said, quote, raw emotions, no hiding behind facades. Can I cry in front of the world? Why am I crying? This world is such a wicked place at times. Our kids are dying before they can live in these streets. Our homes are filled with hate because it's all around us. Destruction is prevalent. Drugs are running rampant in our community. So many are confused. Ascension is necessary. Let it out in front of the world. Do you ever feel like just letting it all out? Some will laugh and that's expected. Some will tap in to see if I'm okay and that's appreciated. I'm begging for mercy on all of us. No soul unaccounted for. I love you. Praying hands. End quote. Listen, I really appreciate Young Jock's message. And I think that it's a very important message for the times that we really need to take heed to. I think what's really bothering me, and maybe I'm just a hardened, cold soul, but I mean, it looks like the cry has been produced by like Shonda Rhimes. I mean, he's standing there with the shirt off with the baby oil on so that the tattoo is glazed just right, so that the light hits him at the right angle when the tear drops. I mean, if you're gonna give me raw emotions, give me raw raw emotions because I'm telling you I don't have time for like the written directed and produced fake tears I mean come on people let's keep it real can we keep it real have we forgotten how to keep it real 
but check it, maybe I'm off. And maybe this is young jock being spontaneously vulnerable in front of the camera. Let me know what you think. Do you think that young jock is being 100% raw with his emotions right now? Or do you think this is a dramatic interpretation of a cry just for social media? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, check it out. According to a report published by the New York Times, hip-hop beef is big business that generates more than $1.6 billion a year for the industry. Well now, Little Dirk is throwing some of the major record labels under the bus by alleging that record companies have offered him money to beef with their artists in an effort to raise their profiles. So check it. The other day, Dirk dropped a post on Twitter that said, quote, labels try to pay me to beef? I just can't fake it. I'm different. I'm him. Unpredictable. End quote. Well, after Dirk made that comment, somebody came in the comment section and said, quote, what labels we want to know. End quote. And another person said, quote, you just not built for it. That was Vaughn Lane. End quote. And yes, I read that right. He said he just not built for that. Ja. J-U-H. Like I just went to the store. Did you just come from the store? Yes. Come on, people. Let's get the grammar right. It's just. J-U-S-T. Just. I mean, come on, people. Let's stop making up words. Well, back to the comments. Another person came through and said, quote, Honestly, Dirk, you ducking YB at this point. Label move or not. You were hyping up your album and gave a date. YB just proved his point. He better than you in the rap game. I'm from Chicago. End quote. Listen, I am quite sure that little Dirk is telling the truth and that most of these labels are like financing these beefs, which is sad because when these young rappers get heard out in these streets, the labels don't say nothing. And all of those white shirt and tie dudes in the background just lean back even further and count their cash because they still get paid when these young guys are like shot down in the streets. And as far as like this NBA young boy versus like little Dirk beef, I think we should stop hyping that up and we should be more focused on like trying to help like NBA young boy get away from the Mormons. Because I mean like do you guys know what the Mormons believe about black people? Check out this clip. A plan was presented to build planet Earth, where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Warning the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus, who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remain neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. <laughs> you see how, like, they baked that racism right into the doctrine and then like they made sure to put it in like cartoon form so that the kids could access it easily and then you wonder why there are so many racist people running around on this earth and I mean honestly as a black person I don't think that I could be part of a religion that was teaching that mess. And you know that it's mess because when it comes to like religion, spirituality and spiritual warfare the last thing that most black people are is neutral. But. To be fair, the Mormons have said that they have updated their doctrine to be more inclusive to the blacks. <laughs> I am done. Listen, on to the next story. Peep this. A lot of Lil Wayne's fans are not feeling wheezy after he canceled his show at the Wiltern Theater in Koreatown, LA mid-set. According to concert goers, Wayne jumped on stage mad late, performed a few songs, and then walked off the stage and left it up to his young money artists, Little Twist, Yaz Kata, and Alan Cubis to entertain the crowd. Now, when Wayne saw that the crowd was not amped up to see his young protégés perform, he jumped back on stage, grabbed the mic, and said, quote, 
We appreciate it, but we ain't about to be bending over backwards for these folks. We work too hard for this ish. We work way too hard. This is my MF and artist, Allen. That was Twist, and that was Yaz. We're young money. We appreciate y'all time. End quote. After that, Lil Wayne and his crew walked off stage and like the crowd thought they were coming back, but they never came back. And then, like the next thing you know, the lights came on and then like security started ushering people out of the venue. Well, needless to say, after the show, Lil Wayne's fans were not happy and one person jumped on Twitter and said, quote, I'll never look at Lil Wayne the same after tonight. He really canceled his concert mid-show because the audience, and I am the audience, sat down while he took a smoke and piss break, end quote. And then another person said, quote, Lil Wayne is the most disrespectful rapper. Yo, how you three hours late, then do 30 minutes? Everyone was so supportive, even though he had no energy. Then he cuts out his fans and drops the mic and leaves. The audacity, shaking my damn head, end quote. And then after that, another person came through and said, quote, went to the Lil Wayne concert tonight. We waited three hours for him. Then it was lit. It was cool. Then he brought out some of his new artists along with like little twists. They was whack. Wayne got mad and canceled the show. I'm still in disbelief. Like he really did that? Shaking my head. End quote. Hmm. Yes, sir. He really did that. Listen, I'm of the belief that artists are selling a product. And if people pay for the product, you got to give them the product. I mean, you just can't be like taking their money and like walking off stage. That is ridiculous. And that might be a sign that like you're getting a little too big for your britches. Listen, let me know what you think about Lil Wayne throwing a tantrum and like walking off stage because the people weren't feeling his protégés. And like, if you're at a concert and like the secondary act is whack, do you feel like obligated to stand on your feet and clap? I mean, let me know what you think in the comments. And hey, yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.